to trump the exercise of power by the assembly of nct i am saying this he is not saying it i am saying it with deepest humility minister your lordship is given a picture as if somebody is hijacking the national capital then and kindly see how they understand the word state kindly go on just like the earlier rules but state is the only word used duty is not used but they understand it to include duty then manus may i with your lordship permission skip 3 4 5 7, 8 and 7a may i skip that kindly come below 7a just the next page thank you for the schedule the following schedule shall be substituted schedule composition of civil services board every state government shall constitute a civil services board which shall consist of chief secretary chairman senior most additional chief secretary board revenue financial commissioner etc rank member principal secretary department of personnel member secretary the civil services board shall make recommendation for all appointment of cadre officers this is the civil services board functioning in delhi where did it come from for a unitary tree if you read the state technically the civil services board shall examine the cases of officers who are proposed to be transferred before completion of minimum period they have always understood the ut to be included in all these rules even though the word state is mentioned they are having a civil services board it's a different matter that he exercises the power and doesn't allow me to exercise but the civil services board is here Just I read this yesterday. That's all right. I'm I'm giving you submission. It. It's not as if this was. Suppressed. I'm not saying you suppressed it. I'm saying yes, I'm giving you interpretation. Yes, I read this. Uh, this is the proviso of clause five. It's on advisory board. Civil service board. Of course, well, the civil services board, like everything else, is advisory body. It, it makes suggestions. The government can always, well, accept. Okay. This covers my para eleven LG. That, that, yeah. that was my submission. No, that obviously advises the LG or the NCT government, but it will, will be a later issue. Now, uh, I have done with this point, and you know, I come back to yesterday's rejoinder. So these are the two points related to para three. I'm sorry, but the Lord may make a mark in para three of the yesterday's submission that they should be read with eleven and twelve, which my Lord has just read. I now come to my members. Yesterday's rejoinder to para four. Yes. Now your lordship asked me that question on three zero nine. Yesterday I said, "Well, I answered it, but I said I will be coming to it later in the note." Yesterday's note. Yesterday's note, para four. Scope of entry. Correct. Scope of entry forty one list two. Is wider than the scope of the provisions of Article 309, and any executive act under 309 does not limit the power of the legislature to make laws under NT 41 this too. That's the head proposition. Before I read that, may I itemize the points here? It will be easier than reading. Then I'll read only one part. The points which I said yesterday need to be itemized now. A. I'm repeating, but I'm itemizing it under this section. The Constitution. Three zero nine starts with subject to the whole Constitution, and necessarily, Malus, our special part dealing with two thirty nine double A etc. is part of that Constitution, and three zero nine is subject to that, to the entire Constitution. It says subject to this Constitution. Two three nine also says subject. No, it says in only one clause. Not in A. I checked three uh, A, only in three A. That's the point. My lord is right. Yeah. Uh, these points you have enumerated here, or you now well, just. Well, uh, it is here, but maybe Malus not with that particularity. That's why I'm so, asking your lordship to just A B C only three points. All right. Just tell us. It's not in this form, Malus. A subject to the constitution. Just a general point. I'm not relying only on subject. To, is the opening word of three zero nine subject to the provisions of this constitution? Comma, acts of the appropriate legislature, etc. So it's even acts subject to. Second, B B. Prem Kumar Jain was a direct case in the same part fourteen, same chapter one. Three sections apart in three one two. Yes. 
for three one two four learned judges of this court, which has stood the test of time, held that duty is covered and subsumed. In that case, the duty of Himachal and Delhi were held to form a joint cadre, reversing the High Court, which said, "Because they are duties, they are not covered under the word state." So, Malik, the C point is that it has been already decided by your lordships that duty is covered, albeit in a case arising under three one two. D D. Absent Malik, any special provision of this chapter or this part, your lordship will never read three one two to include duties. And three zero nine not to include duties. As simple as that. As legislative power, it would be a very startling result unless your lordship allows were forced by some language to do it. Three one two two. D is. I've dealt with C, which is uh, for three one two. Absent specific exclusionary language in the constitution in this chapter, your lordship will never read. Duties to be subsumed under three one two, as Jain holds, and duties not to apply to three zero nine, as my learned friend the solicitor argues. Imagine the startling consequences because of that kind of interpretation. There are the four points which are not put in this form, so the lordship is kind enough to me. Now, my lordship, I read EF from this two paragraphs only from this note. That can be E and F of your lordship. So EF and G in continuation, same section. This is on the width of entry forty-one being larger than three zero nine. Paragraphs four. I. So the additional rejoinder point I have have only para twelve up to para twelve. Maybe mistakenly not. Is it four? Four. Fourteen is there. Fourteen. Yeah, it's there. It takes three. Add zero. Take zero. So don't just one. I am not raising any objection. Take a copy. The copy I list you will get ends at para twelve. My lord, so what did you know? No, no. On on here. Yeah. I have got only up to para twelve. Well, that's what I also got up to. Therefore, I just my deepest apology. Now, hard copy I've got. This is vital for me. I don't know how you're not sure. One percent interest got to the. You have copied the morning. So maybe by. No, no, it is only there. It's up to there. Anyway, I've got it. My apologies. Ah, it's okay. I'll send you a lot of the other one is ah, already there. Please do. You are actually, Doctor Singh, we you can read this para. I was also reflecting on it last night. See the entirety of list two. There's a legal fiction which we have to, as a, as, as we always say, you shouldn't allow your mind to boggle. Uh, there is a legal fiction. There's a legal fiction uh, in 239 AA, as a result of which the entirety of list two of the seventh schedule is basically a concurrent power. Is made like a concurrent. Is made like a concurrent power in relation to the uh, UT of Delhi. So Parliament can legislate on the entirety of list two. Just like the state can also, uh, the UT can right? also. So that's that's the effect of it. Now, if Sir. Parliament can legislate with the entirety of list two in addition to list one and list three, then Parliament has the power to legislate under entry forty one of list two and also. Now, if Parliament has the legislative power. On entry forty-one of list two, then there is no reason to take recourse to entry ninety-seven. You take that's 90, the short point I am making. You take recourse to entry ninety-seven and Article two forty-eight, which is the residuary power, where some there, there is no provision elsewhere. Very great respect, but I can't put it more pithily. Because both both the judgment in Dillon's case, which, which is cited, followed, which is followed in Dillon is cited. The last case here. It says that in deciding as to whether Parliament has legislative legislative competence, you ask yourself only one question: Is there any entry in List Two which covers the field? 
If there is an entry in list two, then Parliament has no legislative Great power. Respect. That is that. If there is no entry in list two, then Parliament has to have power either under list one or list Not three that. or entry ninety-seven. So that's the that's that, 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 that's the recipe. That's right. But here, Parliament undoubtedly has powers on entry forty-one of list two because of the it's fact a concurrent that it's concurrent list. Power. It's a concurrent. And therefore, just it'll take less than two minutes. What your lordship has put very interesting. Hiller. From two perspectives, one the negative, one the positive. I give two cases. Just give me two minutes on that. I yes. missed out para thirteen, which I'll come to after. Just come to fourteen first. Yes. Just it's one one para each. Lord, please not go to the judge. Just read from here. Read that as it may. I'm straight away coming. This is the reverse. In my favour, but in the reverse context. Just read it. In my favour, reverse context. Thirty nine double A provides adequate checks and balances for protection of national interests in the nct of delhi this has been repeated manas so many times capital nct delhi look at this manas the constitution provides what more protection can lordship give than give parliament the entire list to as a concurrent list can a lordship give any more protection manas the boss is parliament if i may use colloquial words manas nobody is denying that the issue is absent parliament exercising contrary power contrary legislative power Somebody in the concurrent list can't exercise the same power in this case a UT. That's the issue. Now read this. A conjoint reading of 239 double A, three and four, posits that the conscious scheme adopted by Parliament in exercise of its constituent power, that is by constitutional amendment, is that the legislative power and concomitant coextensive executive power of the NCT, obviously not concerned with those six entries. Can be legislatively overridden by Parliament. It's as simple as that. All this business, national security, capital of India, nothing. Parliament needs to make a law, or an existing law needs to be applied to trump the exercise of power by the Assembly of NCT. I am saying this. He is not saying it. I am saying it with deepest humility, Malus. Your Lordship is given a picture as if somebody is hijacking the national capital. Then, seeking to obliterate. Now, this is very important. This is a nuance. It's a, it's a jurisprudential nuance which I am submitting for a lot of time consideration. There is a difference between Malas, Parliament and the central government. My problem is my learned friend is reading Parliament to be the central government. That is my problem. That is where the nub of the problem arises. Parliament, your lordship, has given power to trump everything. He says central government should trump. What is happening in this case? The notification impugned is a central government notification. That is not parliament. Please exercise your parliamentary power. The union is seeking to obliterate the distinction between parliament and central government. Under the present scheme, the assembly of NCT has full play in any unoccupied field of an entry in list two. Acceptance of the union argument and upholding of the impugned notification. Would effectively endow the union government with an executive override. Your lordship gives him parliamentary override. He gives to himself executive override by the impugned notification, which I have said is nothing more than adding 41 to 1 to an 18 by executive order. That's the simple number of this case. Endow the union government with an executive override over the assembly of NCT. This is clearly opposed to the fundamental scheme of 239 AA. It must be borne in mind that both legislative and executive checks that govern the exercise of power. One, the entire list two for NCT effectively works as a concurrent list, exactly what my Lord just observed. I am saying so myself. And this, well, I say what I am saying, of course, subject to my Lord, harmonizes the whole thing. What he says, one will create a discordance. Because executive override of parliament, uh, of central government, can never be one envisaged with a parliamentary override. The entire list for the NCT effectively works as a concurrent list. If any law made by assembly is in conflict with a parliamentary law, the same can be reserved for consideration of the president. That's another Lord Shibno's concurrent list procedures. Further, in terms of the functioning of the executive, there's a difference power to refer. That's a separate one. Let's not get into it. Well, I only remains for me to thank your Lordships for a very patient hearing for both of us. <coughs> respect constraints. May I end, Malas? In pre-independence times, long before independence, the British still used to call it the Indian Civil Service. 
So well, Nehru made a very interesting comment. He says, it is neither India, nor civil, nor a service. <laughs> at that time. <laughs> well, as my submission is that at the end of this case, it is vital for your lordships to demarcate black and white the powers. Otherwise, well, as it will be either less of a service or less of civil, it will remain Indian. Deeply obliged. Thank you. Thank you. Immensely. More than patient hearing. Thank you, Mr. We are immensely. I have only, all your... I've done it within one hour, Manoj. I want to repeat that. No, you can't. <laughs> it was a learning experience, Malad. Thank you, Mr. Lister. Thank you, Dr. Singhu. Thank you, everybody. Very deeply obliged.